Isabel Buckley, escorted by her parents Nancy and James Buckley, brother James Buckley. Rachel Kent, parents Tim and Jeremy Kent. <laughs> Ariana Ricciardi, parents Michelle and Emilio Ricciardi. Sophia Scalzo, with her parents Lisa and Silvio Scalzo, siblings Julia and Emma Scalzo. Taylor Vader and her parents Larry and David Vader. And now the captain, Captain Jessica Offer, and the parents Lisa and Tom Offer. <laughs> captain Carolyn Wanchi and her parents. And Mike Rossi. <laughs> Captain Elizabeth Roos and her parents Maria and Ross Roos. Finally, Captain Jessica Yenikopoulos, escorted by the parents Tim and Paul Yenikopoulos. At this time, we're going to bring all the Fifteen seniors and their parents who so want to take pictures of the whole group.
And it, this time we'll begin with the senior football players and their families. Number four, Jonathan Courtright and his parents, Michael, Michelle, his mom, and twin sister Amanda and brother Zachary. Number nine, Bobby DeFeo, and his parents, Chris and Angel, brothers Tommy and Johnny. Number nine, Bar uh, uh, number twelve, Danny Harris. His mother, Colleen Glenn, and his little sister, Sophia Glenn. Number fifteen, Brian Fabry, Mom Suzette. Brother Jimmy and grandparents Lou and Judy Fabers. Number 22, Vincent Cadaris, with parents Laura and George, brother Nick, sister in law Sam, niece Alina, and sisters Haley and Vanessa. Number 33, Zach Satori with parents Bob and Cheryl, siblings Caitlin, Matthew, Jacqueline, Cameron, and Addison. Number 50, Max Kishak, uh, Dad Brian and Mom Nancy.
number 54, David Emioni, with Terrence Joe and Sharon. Number 77, Caden Johnson, Eric Kim and Tonya. And now for the captain. Quinn, number seven, Christian Delgado, and number 21, Nathan Delgado, escorted by their mother, Melissa. <laughs> number 11, David Willis, escorted by his mom, Rosa, and dad, Jason. And number 18, Ian Dixon, parents Eric and Terry, and brother Luke. Let's hear it for the 2022 Senior Football Players in their parents. Good evening, football fans. We'd like to welcome you to the Wakefield Warriors Senior Night tonight. Here you're ha we have your Wakefield Warriors playing the Wilmington Wildcats, and we are just about set to go. It appears like we have Stephen Woish kicking off for Wakefield tonight. Bit of a difference, and he's going to have a great kick to start off. It's going to drop right behind the 20. And a solid run there from Wilmington to start this game. Yeah, Joe Kuhlman with that kick return. Big tight end here for Wilmington. Joseph Kuhlman on the return to the Wilmington 34. First and 10 to Wilmington. And Wakefield still undefeated so far. 7-0 and so far. And Wilmington Wildcats 0-7. So definitely a bit of a lopsided matchup for tonight's senior night for Wakefield. We'll see how it plays out.
and it's gonna be a handoff here from Wilmington to start off the game. And a new bird out of carry. Good job. Number 88. And last week, the Warriors coming off a big win to stay undefeated, a big win, 21 to seven on the road against Watertown. The defense especially was a great factor here. Ian Dixon, senior from Wakefield, had four sacks and a forced fumble. Let's see if the defense can stay strong and continue. Roke looking to pass. Just lost that one out of bounds. A lot of pressure there from Wakefield. Good job by Joe and Monica there getting to the quarterback. Bring up an early third and long here for Wilmington. And obviously, like you said, 0-7. This team struggled all year, hungry to pick up their first win. Absolutely, and even if they are most likely out of the playoff contention, they definitely don't want to end the season as having zero wins. Definitely going to put forth their best effort tonight. Roke looking to pass again. Going deep. Well covered there. Nathan Delgado. And that'll be a quick turnover on downs from Wilmington. Great defensive stand by Wakefield. And a very promising start here so far for the Warriors. Already forcing Wilmington to punt. Giving up almost no yards. And just about a minute in, and this Warrior defense is already looking very strong. Woish set to return. We get it around the 45. Can't find much room, but short punt leads to good field position for Wakefield. And this will definitely give him solid starting field position just behind Wilmington territory. Looks like they're going to place the ball right on the 50, actually. Ball looks to be spotted right at the 50 yard line. First and 10 Warriors. And last week, the defense did not start out strong, only putting up seven in the first quarter, but they've been great all season so far. They're averaging 28.1 points per game. So we're gonna see a handoff to Nathan Delgado here. Delgado's been a standout on offense all year, main ball carrier for Wakefield. Had a five yard touchdown last week against Watertown. Definitely expecting a lot from him, as well as a number of seniors on the Wakefield offense. Stop was made by Peter LeBlanc. And Willis with three receivers to his right. We got Dixon. And it's going to be a big pass to Woish, and he's got it, and Woish is going to go all the way in for the touchdown. And Wakefield already off with a strong start. Huge touchdown there by Stephen Woish. A great catch and a great pass. I mean, we've seen that all year. Deep connections from Willis to Woish has been the story of this Wakefield offense for a long time now. Absolutely, and this Willis-Woish duo definitely been Unstoppable, seems like, so far. And looks like Woish, no break from him. He's coming for the PAT. And great kick. Kick is good. And the kick is good. Making it for Wakefield 7. So that you do. So Woish, not only with the touchdown, but also the PAT.
And with Roy set to kick off again, we'll know we'll be saying his name a lot tonight on every side of the ball. Absolutely, both defense and offensively, a huge threat. I remember a couple weeks ago, he got a pick at about halftime in the last game. And a great we cover there from Weish. And this Wilmington team is going to take it just past the 35 yard line. Decent return there from Wilmington. This should definitely give them promising starting field position. But they're going to have a huge task in front of them, especially with this Wakefield defense. A yeah, great thing to see, they weren't hesitant to pass in that first drive, so they obviously want to stay in this game. Absolutely, but it's going to be very tough against this Wakefield defense, who have only averaged 6.28s per game letting up, so definitely an impossible feat almost as they're pushed back. 88 of the carry to the 40 yard line. Stop by a host of Wakefield tacklers. Second and eight from the 40. So it'll be second and eight here for the Wildcats. Rokes got two receivers on his right. He's gonna keep it himself. Finds a little room there. Still stopped short by Wakefield tacklers. Great tackle there by Max Cusack, senior out of Wakefield. Absolutely just not giving him any breathing room. Four-yard line, setting up a third down and four. Third and four here. Wilmington definitely wants to get the first down here as they got receivers in motion, and they're going to be a handoff, and it's going to be short of the first down. Yeah, Waller couldn't find any room on that right side. Great job by Wakefield reading that play. By so about a one -yard game is just and it looks like the offense is going to stay on the field and they're going to go for it on fourth and three. Yeah, this is going to be huge here for Wilmington. You don't want to give Wakefield good field possession. So you have to convert this. And if I were Wilmington, definitely going to need to open it up to the pass game. And it looks like they will, as Rook has two receivers on his left and one to his right. But he's going to take it himself. And it doesn't look like they're going to get the first down. Rook on a keeper. Come out of the field. Yeah, it's definitely going to be close. They're going to have to bring out the first down marker. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have a measurement. And Wilmington, definitely a lot to prove tonight against the undefeated Warriors would be able to pull off a stunning upset if they can take the game tonight. Coming off a last week loss, 34 to 11 to the Stoneham Spartans. A very good team, six and one. And they're gonna be short of the first down. And Wakefield again giving great start, getting great starting field position to set up the offense here. Yeah, it's been a common theme for Wakefield this year: defense creating for the offense. Absolutely, and it's a lot of credit to the defensive line with the likes of Max Cusack, Caden Johnson, and Ian Dixon. And Caden Johnson also great on offensive line. 
having not given up a sack all season. And going into this game, I talked to Johnson saying he is not worried for for this Wilmington team and says, quote, we could easily put 50 on them as we're going to see a pass from Christian Delgado, pass to Christian Delgado, and he's easily going to put up a, get a first down. Lewis's pass complete to number seven, Christian Delgado. Knocked out of and great blocking on the outside by Warsh and Dixon, picking up huge yardage the there. Warriors Definitely a great down. blocking there, and that's going to give Wakefield a good amount of yards. It seems like in one play, they got more yards than Wilmington has all game. A 22-yard gain there from Wakefield. And Willis has got Nathan Delgado behind him. It's going to be a handoff to Nathan, and Nathan's going to find some breathing room and he's going to be tripped up. Not enough for the first down, but a decent gain there. Delgado on the carry down to the 12-yard line. 14-yard gain in a Warrior. Actually, that one will move the chains. Oh, wow. Delgado, a 14-yard rush right there. A new set of downs here for Wakefield. And... This isn't going to be first and goal, though. It looks like they have a tiniest bit of breathing room as the new first down marker is going to be just in front of the one-yard line. It's going to be a pass there, a nice quick pass there to Ian Christie. Well, this is pass complete to number 16, Ian Christie. And Ian Christie, definitely a promising talent. He's only a sophomore, already starting on varsity, making some great plays so far. Definitely a big prospect for Wakefield. And Willis, this time with senior Bobby DeFeo behind him. And so we'll give the ball to Bob. Yeah, and on DeFeo's first Bobby touch DeFeo of the game, the he scores a touchdown. Five, Great play there touchdown. from DeFeo, finding some room up the middle. For, uh, and DeFeo, back-to-back -back touchdowns. First quarter last week. He caught a 15-yard pass from Javen Willis. So back-to-back -back touchdowns for DeFeo. A nice easy run in there to give Wakefield a 13-0 lead. And here's Woish on the point after. Kick is up. Oh, and it's blocked. Extra point is blocked. Yeah, great, great play. block there by Wilmington. And unfortunately, that's an unnamed player on the Wilmington roster, number 88. But huge block from him. We've seen him run the ball a couple times, too. Definitely going to be a strong force for Wilmington throughout this game. I mean, nothing Woish can do there. He can't control how his line blocks, but that was swift movement by 88. Definitely looked like a promising kick, but a huge play there by Wilmington. And it definitely could come back to bite Wakefield if they're not careful. But so far, this defense has not been letting up, even early on in the game. We're seeing a lot of promising plays here. And here's Woish on the kick. Definitely going to want a promising kick after that blocked PAT. And it is going to be a promising kick. It would have landed right at about the 10 yard line. And Wilmington again with a strong return here. And he's still on his feet. And that'll bring Wilmington again just past the 35 yard line, about the same starting field position they had. Last drive. Let's see if they can offer a better drive than the previous one. Deanna Herrick, one of the tacklers on that. We're going to take those first down. It looked like to be senior Daniel Herrick on the tackle there. So the ball will be on the 36 here. 
for Wilmington. New set of downs. Let's see if they can do anything with it. It's going to be a handoff here. And flag on the play. Penalty back on the play. Would have been a handoff to Julian Sella, senior out of Stoneham. Best junior out of Stoneham, excuse me. Yeah, it looked to me there like 63 jumped Michael Ings for Wilmington. This is likely going to be a false start. And it will be just that. And that's very unfortunate for the Wildcats. That's going to push them back a little bit. First down and 15. So definitely not that detrimental of a penalty, only pushing him back five yards. But could be a deciding factor, and if they get the first down. Yeah, to a team that's already struggling, five yards feels like a mile. Rourke's got two receivers on his right. It's going to be a handoff here. Peter LeBlanc there. Peter LeBlanc on the carry. Stephen Roots in the stop. Ball front of the 41. Yeah, great play by Wilmington. What a lot of trickery in there. Of nine, and, it'll be second and, six. and that's a solid gain there, a gain of nine. That would have put him one yard away from the first down had they not gotten that penalty. And like we said, that could definitely be a deciding factor and they get their if they get their new set of downs here. Very tight formation here for Wilmington. Definitely expecting to see a handoff from Rourke. And it will be. Oh, and the ball is dropped. And Still who's going to jump ground. on it? And it was bobbled a bit. And Wakefield's got the ball. Fumble on the play. Recovered by Wakefield. And let's see who's got it. Number 89. Matt Beaver picking up the ball there. Great job by the sophomore yeah, diving on top it. of it. Such a costly play there Absolutely. from Wilmington. And that comes at all the fault of the offense there. Wakefield definitely put on the pressure, but it was certainly Wilmington who quite literally dropped the ball. Honestly, gifting Wakefield an opportunity here. Spread out formation here. Willis got two on his right, one on his left. It's going to be a fake handoff. And Willis airing it out. It's going to be bobbled by Dixon, and he's not going to be able to come up with it. Dixon really got rocked on that play. He's definitely slow to get up. Let's hope he's all right. We'll see Willis and Delgado in the backfield again. It's going to be a handoff to Delgado. And Delgado Wilmington swamped swarming. up there. Not the best we've seen from Delgado so far. He's usually been great all season, having a five-yard touchdown Nathan last Delgado week against Watertown. And not a promising yeah. start on this drive for the Warriors. This will bring up third and 12 after being near perfect with a 13-0 start, aside from that missed point after from Stephen Weish. So third and 12, I could definitely see Willis making a pass play here. Absolutely gonna air it out here. I mean, there's no reason not to need big yardage. And I definitely could see him looking to his left for Christian Delgado. He's gonna roll to his right. Is he and Dixon. Flag on the play, but Dixon charging ahead. Dixon inside the 10. And a great redemption play there by Dixon. But it's going to be holding on Wakefield. That's a big setback. Very unfortunate there for Wake. And Ian Dixon, after having that incomplete pass early, earlier this drive, definitely a huge play from him, but this will push Wakefield back a lot. Penalty. Ball's going to be spotted behind the 50, the way behind, right about the 45-yard line. Setting up a third down in. Third and 30. So 
So I believe this is third and 30, if my math is correct. And we can definitely can see Wakefield easily getting a new first down here. It's going to be a short pass to Woish, and Woish is going to make some moves. Will it be enough for the first down? No. Unfortunately there for Woish, he had some great moves, but unable to get to the first down. And it looks to be a tackle by number 88, an unnamed player on the Wilmington roster, but has been a huge difference maker so far. Wakefield offense is going to stay out here. I mean, that was a huge gain for Moish, but the first down marker just so far away on that play. And if there's anyone who could have picked up the first down on that play, it, was, it is Wakefield. We've seen them go 80-yard, 90-yard passes throughout the season. Fourth and long here. And Willis. Willis rolling out to his right. Looks to Woish, and he's got him. Easy catch there by Woish. The Wakefield imposing their will there on those last two plays, picking up 30 yards. And Wish was definitely a huge factor there, really making some nice moves on that short pass earlier to set up a good starting field position to get that first down. So this will put them on the 22-yard line with a new set of downs, just about two and a half minutes left in the first quarter. It's going to be a handoff here. And Nathan Delgado again wrapped up. Nathan Delgado on the carry, stopped in the backfield. And I definitely was not at the fault of Delgado. The <laughs> offensive line has not been do putting up its best effort Abu, yet. Abu so far this season, they've been great, but definitely not showing up today. We've seen Willis rolling to his right and left a lot, something he usually doesn't do. But tonight especially, he's definitely feeling pressured in the pocket. But this Wilmington defense, at least their defensive line, has been very good. And second and 13 here for the Warriors. We got Christian Delgado in motion. And Willis is going to air it out. It's going to be caught. And a Big touchdown, touchdown there. there. I think that was Stephen Boyce. What a catch. And what a perfectly thrown ball. And, yep, Boyce on the touchdown there. The Big field. play by Woish, and he's not even going to get a chance to walk off the field. Uh, he's got to prepare for the point after. And his previous uh, one was blocked. Great effort there by the Wilmington defense. Let's see if they can do it, do it again this time. Kick is up, and it is good. And the kick is good. And that's going to give Wakefield a 20 to nothing lead already in this first quarter. Great start here by Wakefield. What an incredible throw from Javen Willis on that play. He put it only where Stephen Woish could get it. And absolutely, Woish was definitely heavy, was in heavy coverage there, but easily able to make a play and get that touchdown. And as we wait for kickoff, let's talk power rankings as we close out on the final home game of the regular season. Wakefield is now the number two ranked team in Division Three Division football three. in Massachusetts. Couldn't remember my numbers there, but a big jump as last week before their Watertown game, they were ranked seven. And skyrocketing up five spots to number two as Stephen Way skyrockets a kick. And that's going to give Woburn, uh, Wilmington, excuse me, a decent starting field position right at about the 28 yard line. Yeah, on the return to the 30 yard line. What? 
Now Julian Sella, another great return there. This Wilmington offense has been put in a great position on all three or four of their drives now in this game, but nothing has come of it so far. Yeah, definitely unfortunate for Wilmington. A few bad breaks after another and have been unable to come up with a score. But definitely still early in this game. Got plenty more chances to score as we got a new set of downs. And it's going to be a handoff from Rourke. And wrapped up. Not much of any gain there for Wilmington. Yeah, it'll be 88 on the carry. 88 on the carry. And it seemed to be a big tackle there by David Amione, senior from Wakefield. And two seconds on the stop. Gain of two seconds and eight on the 32. The senior stacked off defensive line has been a force all season for Wakefield. Absolutely. And getting to the quarterback a lot, and maybe that's why we haven't seen Wilmington pass so much early. And I mentioned only allowing six point, an average of 6.28 points per game this season. A huge factor for this team. And it's going to be another tackle there by Amione to give Wilmington only three to bring, set up third and five here. And something we are yet to see this drive is a passing play from Wilmington. Seems like we haven't seen it since the first drive. Rourke shot two receivers on his left and right. That's going to be a pass play there. Oh, my goodness. What a great catch there. Hunter Sands there on the catch. Great one-handed catch. It's going to be a new set of downs here for Wilmington. Yeah, great job pulling that one into his body. It was way over his head. I thought yeah. surely that play would have ended the drive. but Definitely credit to the receiver there. Huge catch by him. But definitely a smart play there by Wilmington. Just get the ball out there quick and set up a new set of downs. It's going to be a switch for Wakefield as junior Cade Esposito comes in. He's been great so far this season. Let's see if he can keep that streak up. And definitely a tight formation compared to the last play. And that's going to be into the first quarter. Definitely a promising start for Wakefield so far, putting up 20 points as opposed to Wilmington 0. And Tim, what do you think the rest of this game is going to look like for Wilmington? Well, Wilmington's got to get competitive. They don't look like they want to win this game right now. So the offense needs to make some big chunk yardage plays, pass the ball a little bit more. And, you know, good things happen as we saw in that first down conversion. Yeah, and I definitely agree with that on that point. I think they got a newfound passing game with that huge play by Hunter Sands there. And I think they really got to adapt to that and utilize that in the future to really put some points on the board and maybe catch up to Wakefield. And as for Wakefield, I say they definitely are doing all the right things so far, but definitely just almost nothing to work on as they've been putting up 20 points in 12 minutes. But let's see what this second quarter has in store. Attempted carry there by Roke. He didn't get anywhere. And apologies for the late call there. It's just been brought to our attention that Wakefield is actually ranked number four, I believe, in the Division Three state rankings. But still, a very good spot for Wakefield here as we close out their final home game of the regular season. This will be second and 12 here for Wilmington. Their second play of the second quarter. It's going to be a handoff there to Peter LeBlanc. And he's going to get a decent amount of yards there. Second 
So this will spot the ball right at the 50-yard line. Third and three. Third and three. Timeout, Wakefield. And Wakefield's going to take their first timeout. After seeing that update in the power rankings, you kind of have to think of this game as a must win for Wakefield if they want to preserve their spot atop the rankings. Absolutely, and especially as their last game in the home, at their last home game in the season, they definitely want to put on the show for the fans right before playoffs. Encourage them to come to their playoff games. We still have one more regular season game against Melrose, the Thanksgiving game. And a win over Wilmington tonight will put them one game away from an undefeated regular season. Yeah, and what better way to end the season off than with a rivalry? And Tim, on third and three, what do you think Wakefield has to do to get this stop and bring up fourth down? Well, they gotta be wary of the run game. The two plays that they've picked up big yardage on with runs has been a double option with a wide receiver coming across the middle and then cutting up the middle of the offensive line. And Wakefield definitely gotta anticipate that as we're seeing a tight formation here from Wilmington. Rourke's gonna take the snap and it's gonna be a pass play to 81 there. Noah Spencer with the reception. Seems like he'll pick up the first down pretty easily. Brooks pass complete to number 81. And Wilmington Noah so Spencer. far coming out strong Ball to be in this second quarter. Five, Definitely want to make a statement down. here and get some points on the board. Yeah, just a quick simple out route there from Spencer. But Wakefield obviously wasn't expecting it as the passing game has been subpar so far from Wilmington. And it looks like a very similar formation here. Only difference is Michael Lawler setting up on the left instead of the right. It's going to be Julian Sella with the carry there. Julian Sella the carry. Loss of three. The and that's going to push Wilmington back a little Team bit there. Loss Toledo. of three on the play. Second down. 13. Bit of a more spread out formation here. We got Hunter Sands and Michael Lawler here setting up. And it's going to be a false start there. Looks like Declan O'Callaghan there. Just a bit of a false start. Very unfortunate for Wakefield. Offside, Wakefield. Oh, offside, excuse me. Five-year penalty sets up second down and eight from the... I don't think we've mentioned this yet, but this is Wilmington's first time in Wakefield territory in the game. Draining a lot of clock yeah, on this well, drive, though. And with second and eight here, they're definitely going to use that penalty to their advantage and try to get another first down and move the chains here. Going with the same formation here. Roke looking to pass. Caught Find by Sands. Hunter Sands. Sands pushing forward. And Woish there on the tackle. But Wilmington able to pick up a first down. Hunter Sanders on the catch. To the Wakefield 32 yard line. Not yet in a first down. Yeah, Sands a big guy. 6'1", 180. Looking strong there, the junior from Wilmington. A new set of downs on the Wakefield 32, the closest the closest they've been to the Wakefield end zone all game. And Rorick is going to immediately roll to his right. It's going to be a big pass. Almost picked off there. 
Oh, that ball hung in the air for a while. I thought it was for sure going to be picked off. And Declan O'Callaghan seemed to have his hand, seemed to have has hands on it, but unable to come up with the interception. Sawa so, uh, checking back into the game for Wilmington. Second and 10 with the ball on the 32 here for Wilmington. Looks like Lawler and Sand setting up on the right. Roke with the snap. Takes the handoff, but now he's going to take it himself. Flag on the play. Decent gain there from Roke, but it's going to be a holding call against Wilmington. That'll set him back significantly. That is unfortunate. Wilmington really got something going this drive. And really been able to catch the defense off guard. It seems like every play, they're just bringing out something new and able to pick up a decent amount of yards and definitely why they've been able to get to as far down the field as they have. But this is going to be a huge pushback from them. Yeah, it's been great play calling. Holding, obviously, not part of the playbook, but just something you have to deal with in the game. Roke, once again, looking to pass. Great pressure from Wakefield. Amione picking up a sack right there. Roke looks a little shooken up after the play. Warrior 46, setting up third down. 21. Timeout, Wilmington. And definitely a much needed timeout here for Wilmington. Third and 21. A lot of yards to go if they want to pick up that first down. We saw Wakefield do it, but does Wilmington have the same tenacity that this Wakefield offense has? And in situations like this, I could definitely see them going for it on fourth down. Seems like this is their most promising drive so far, and they definitely want to keep it going and get into the end zone. Absolutely, they're desperate to stay in this game. Wilmington definitely wants to take their time here on this timeout, really making sure they can get the best play to get those yards. Eighty-eight back in the game after a long needed rest. Set up on the left side of Roke. Lots of receivers here for Roke. And he's gonna take it himself. And he's gonna beat Dixon. And a great run there by Roke. Very quick QB. Able to blow by a lot of the Wakefield defense. And fourth and six, a huge gain on there by Roke. And the Wakefield defense seems like their big problem here is they're just not quick enough to make these plays. Fourth and six here. Roke looking to pass again. That one's going to be way over the head of Michael Waller. 
And a turnover on downs here. And that comes out for the QB. Definitely a very unfortunate play. Seems like he went too quick and didn't give him enough time to set his feet and really make sure he was getting a good throw in as that throw was way over Lawler's head. Absolutely, and Roke had more time there. I think if he worked through his progressions, they would have picked up that first down easily. Absolutely, and very unfortunate for Wilmington as they're once again giving up a turnover on downs here. Giving Wakefield a new set of downs. Not the best starting field position for Wakefield as we've seen so far this game. But Wakefield has definitely proven that they are able to make long strides down the field very easily. And Nathan Delgado back again setting up behind Dixon. Willis with the snap going to hand it off to Delgado. Trying to find his way through this offensive line, but just every hole is filled That's by Wilmington. And great moves here by the Wilmington defensive line so far. Nathan Delgado has not been able to come up with any great runs so far. And at no fault to him, definitely just an impressive effort from the defensive line of Wilmington Wildcats. Second and nine here after that gain of one from Nathan Delgado. It's gonna be a quick pass there to Christian Delgado. Delgado near the first down marker, but will we pick it up? They're going to say yes. Great play there by Delgado. Ball in front of the 39 yard line and a Warriors first down. And new set of downs on the ball with the ball on the 39 yard line after just barely picking up a first down. Let's see if Wayland can, can keep conti continuing to move the chains there. Woish way out to Willis's right. It's going to be handoff up the middle to Delgado. And again, Delgado with not much of a gain there. Up to the field of the carry, no gain. Kick it down and 10 from the 30s now. We well, feel draining clock here, down to five and a half minutes left in the second quarter. And Woish, the only receiver on Willis's right, as we see Christian Delgado in motion, it's going to be a pass to him, and it goes right into his hands. And Christian able to pick up a good amount of yards there. Willis's pass complete to Christian Delgado. Ball up to yeah, great pass there from Willis. We've Delgado seen some tight there. coverage from Wilmington. But just passes a zip right over their heads from Willis. Great placement. And Willis with Nathan Delgado behind him. Oh, Delgado. Delgado's going to find some room there. Still on his feet. He's going to be short of the first down, but that's the Nathan biggest Delgado gain from Nathan Delgado so far this game. 36-yard line. Nine-yard gain. Second of one. So that'll put Wakefield with a gain of nine there, just short of the first down to bring up second and one. Yeah, you can see on that play, Dixon was sweeping across, opened up a big hole for Delgado. Finally, some of the best blocking we've seen all day. Definitely put some credit into Dixon there. Great blocking. As Wilson has got three receivers on his left, one of them being Dixon. It's going to be a pass to Christian Delgado this time. And Christian looks like he's going to have the first down. And again, credit to the blocking there. Great blocking there by Ian Dixon. Down to the 30 yard line. And it's going to be enough for the first Six down. And a warrior first down.
Willis fakes it over to Delgado. He's going to take it himself. Actually, he looks deep to Ian Christie, and that one will be underthrown and picked off. Sands with the interception. And Hunter Sands has had some great catches now, both on offense and defense. And not what you want to see from Willis, who has been great all season in the passing game. Yeah, it's one of the few interceptions we've seen from him all year. Just a sad mistake there from Wakefield, but not too costly, pinning Wilmington deep inside their own territory. And Tim, I know you thought he was going to take it for himself, and I'm sure he's now thinking he should have. Definitely regretting passing on there. Absolutely. Could have easily picked up a few yards or more in, on that taking by taking it himself. It's going to be a handoff here. Oh, and a lot of room to run there from Wilmington. Peter LeBlanc with the carry. LeBlanc with another carry. Ball probably 32, that by 20. Six yard game and a lot of first down. Roke and Sella in the backfield. Roke's going to look to pass. Another great display of that connection there. Roke to Sands. Picking up some decent yardage right there. Now I want to move the chains. And Wilmington, so far this second quarter, has really been able to move the chains here. But in the heat of the moment, when they have the chance to score, has not been able to come up with any points. Let's see if they can turn the tides here against the Red Sea and put some points on the board. Although, not much time left, only three minutes, and the way they've been moving down the field so far in these opening quarters, definitely going to have to make some big plays if they want to score. It's going to be a handoff here. Not much gain there by number 88. Yeah, not sure why you'd go back to the run game there. Only three minutes left in this half, and you just picked up 11 with Sands. And that run will definitely keep the clock going as we're now under three minutes to go here. Wilmington really going to have to kick it into high gear here if they want to put some points on the board. Ball is going to be at the 43. 57 yards here to go until that end zone. Looks like they're definitely going to open up to the passing game here. Yeah, Roke dropping back way overthrown there. He just can't seem to connect with Waller. Not sure if it's a lack of chemistry, but they just don't seem to be on the same page so far. And it definitely seems to be because Rourke is overthrowing Lawler here. But he's able to connect with Sands, which I find interesting, and definitely could make the argument for a lack of chemistry as the two are only have an inch difference in height. So definitely not a difference in overthrowing here. It seems like a lack of chemistry between the two. Let's see if they can change it here as Rourke's going to take it himself, and he's going to get a huge gain there. Great stop there by Steven Woish. Wilmington's still going to pick up the first down there. Clock running down to two minutes here in the second quarter. And Wilmington still with two timeouts. Yeah, already in Wayfield territory. Good situation here for Wilmington. Broken a pass again. Way overthrows. Nathan Delgado with the interception going down the sideline. Still on his feet is Delgado. And a, a great huge play there. And 
And Nathan Delgado, back-to-back -back interceptions and back-to-back -back games, had an interception against Watertown last week. He's able to keep that streak going. And very unfortunate for Wilmington there. Not what you want to see. As soon as they started to get some movement going, they're stopped by Wakefield. And unable to turn the tides against the Red Sea. Yeah, an eye for an eye type sequence here. Both teams throwing an interception at a costly point. And Wakefield still with a decent amount of time, definitely an adequate amount of time to put some points on the board. Going to be a pass to Chris Nogato, and Chris Nogato has got blockers, and he's got room, and it looks like he's going to be in for the touchdown. Big run there by Chris Nogato. Big pass. Yeah, great display of speed there from Delgado. And I sat down with Christian Delgado earlier this week, and he had some big words for me saying, the next th thing you see after I catch that ball is going to be the band playing. And while unfortunately the Wakefield Warrior marching band is in New Jersey, I'm sure they're definitely playing for him right now as he gets Wakefield on the board with 26 as we see Stephen Weish on the PAT. It's going to be a flag there. Outside. Yeah, faking the snap there. Caught Wilmington jumping off sides as they've been very urgent to go and block these extra points throughout the game. It's going to be a snap overdone. Willis looking to pass. That one's going to be knocked down. So a bit of a broken play there from Wakefield. Really unexpected, but nevertheless, a 26 to nothing lead with a minute and a half left in the half. Here's Royce from the kickoff. Another great kick from Royce. Sella gonna find some rum. Great return there for Wilmington. And that's definitely just what Wilmington needs as they got only a minute and 25 seconds left if they wanna score here. Not a, that much time. And they're certainly gonna have to open it up to the passing game if they want to get some points on the board. Roke taking the snap. It's going to be a handoff to 88. Swallowed up in the backfield. Wakefield defensive line looking great now. Henry Brown in one of his tacklers. Ball up to be spotted on the 44 yard line. Wakefield now obviously very aware of the Wilmington run game. And under a minute here to go for Wilmington. Still definitely taking their time. 
They still have two timeouts, and you have to wonder if they're going to utilize them. It's going to be another run here to 88, and he's going to find some room, but he's going to be wrapped up by Christian Delgado. Great play there by Christian Delgado. 88, 88 trying to bully his way through Delgado. He got him by his shoestrings and took him down. Wilmington going to take their second timeout. And just about 30 seconds here left for Wilmington. Tighter formation than I expect for the likely one of the last plays of the half. And you really got to look out for Hunter Sands here. It's going to be a pass there to Lawler this time. Flag thrown on the play. Work finally <laughs> able to find Lawler, but it seems like it's going to be too late. Michael Lawler. Looks like there's a flag on the play. Holding. And be another holding call on Wilmington. Very unfortunate for Wilmington. Going to push them back pretty far. Ball will now be spotted at the 50 yard line. So ball's going to be right at the 50. So 50 yards in 26 seconds. Let's see if they can do it. Definitely going to need to open up to the passing game. We know they can do it. It's just a chance of if work is set is able to make a pass. I think Wakefield should turn their attention to Sands here on the outside. Roke trying to go deep for Waller. It will be picked off again by Nathan Delgado, his second of the game. That will end off the half. The pass was intercepted by Delgado. Two interceptions already for Nathan Delgado, as that's going to be the play to close out the half. That'll be it. 26 0 going into halftime. Wakefield looking strong. Wilmington, quite the opposite. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Wakefield Warriors versus Wilmington Wildcats. Wakefield scored four touchdowns already in this game. It's going to be Hunter Sands. An onside kick there, and they're going to get it back. Oh, my. I was at first shocked to see that Hunter Sands was at kickoff, but definitely a great start here for Wilmington. Yeah, senior Vinny Caderis diving in on that. Just couldn't get a grip. Huge play for Wilmington. And we talked about on the break if we would see uh, Wakefield putting in all their seniors here for senior night. But now they might have to keep their starters in. Roke taking the snap, going to hand it off to Sella. Sella charging through, decent gain there for Wilmington. Sella the carry. Ball spot on the Warrior 46. Give it a seven, second of three. This will be.
looks like it's going to be second and three here for the Wildcats. Yeah, definitely seven yard gain there from Sella. Definitely going to see a run here or not. I stand corrected. It's going to be a pass. Well, Blank catching that one. Pass complete to LeBlanc. Thought of the Warriors 37-yard line, 38, a well first down. Yeah, onside kick obviously set, obviously setting up Wilmington with some great field position, obviously already in official territory as we see Michael Lawler jumping a bit early there will be a false start. And time and time again, it seems like Wilmington is just being pushed back on crucial plays. And definitely a big factor of why they haven't been able to score yet so far. Roka handoff to 88. Eighty by Obviously, you can see number 88 for Wilmington. Thirty. Very large player. Built well for the running back position. Reminds me of Jerome the Bus Bettis in the way he runs. Second and ten here for Wilmington. It's going to be another handoff to 88. And he's not going to be able to come up with much of anything. 88 again. Dixon. And Kuchak on the stop. Now looks to be spotted on the... And so a gain of two, then a gain from three. Third for number 88 there. Wilmington really not putting their best foot forward to start off the second half. Third and five here for the Wildcats. Pass from Roke. Looks to be completed far enough for the first down. That'll be another connection with Sands. And slowly but surely, the Wilmington Wildcats are moving down the field. New set of downs here for Wilmington. Let's see if they can make something happen. It's going to be a handoff here. And no gain. Yeah, Wilmington trying that double reverse again. LeBlanc made it a little too obvious, and Dixon picked up on it. Good stop there for Wakefield. That'll be a loss of three for Wilmington. Be a handoff while we're taking this one. Peter LeBlanc at the carry. Excuse me, that would be LeBlanc Back taking that one. Eight yard line. Third and 11. Third and long coming up here for Wilmington.
So this will set up third and 11 here for Wilmington. Definitely gonna have to step up and make a play here. Wakefield bringing pressure. Looks like it'll be Sella going to the outside there. And a decent gain, but not enough for the first down. I should definitely go for it here on fourth. Yeah, gain of eight. Brings up fourth and three now for Wilmington. This is huge for Wakefield to have a shutout going for them right now. And with Wilmington deep in their territory, certainly looking to score here. And usually they usually step it up in the second half, only allowing 24 second half points this season, an average of 3.4 per game. Trying to that, lower that average this time and maintain a shutout. Fourth and three here. Tight formation from Wilmington. It's gonna be a handoff. 88 trying to bully his way through. Wakefield stacks on top of him. We'll see where they spot this one. 80 carry. Time out on the field. Looks like we're going to need another measurement here. And very unfortunate that we don't have a name for this unnamed 88 player as he has been great so far this game. Definitely a huge difference maker so far. Yeah, what can be the soul of this Wilmington team as we see ball will be marked just short. Huge down. stop there by the Wakefield defense. Referee taking out the index card there to measure the distance between the ball and the yard to go. Wakefield going to take over at their own 17-yard line. We got Christian Delgado in motion this play. Handoff is bobbled by Nathan Delgado. And it looks like he's able to recover. Delgado Almost a huge the break the there ball for the Wildcats. Willis with the snap again, passes it out. Christian Delgado finding a lot of room. See that way, Nathan the Delgado 50, charging his way down the sideline. He is so. gone. Huge play there by Nathan Delgado. Hadn't really shown up in the first half offensively. Had two interceptions though. But a huge play here. Definitely a statement play by Wakefield. Still in it. Definitely going to try to maintain that shutout and more. And it really shows you just how quickly this Wakefield team can score. Yeah, blocking set up perfectly there by Wakefield on the outside. And once Delgado found some room, he was home free as we see Woish either had this one tipped or just flatlined it a little bit. It's gonna be no good.
Wish and Wish kick off for our race rest. Wish with the kickoff once again. So with the turn this time, Wakefield gets to him pretty easily. Still decent field position for Wilmington though, down to the 30 yard line. Wilmington, let's see if they can still put some effort into this drive. With a 32 to zero deficit, definitely seems to be an impossible feat. But they definitely at least want to get some points on the board. LeBlanc with the handoff, not going to go much of anywhere. LeBlanc with a carry and the only one of the stoppers. Ball Second and seven here for the Wildcats. Roke fakes the handoff, looks to pass. Zips it straight by Waller. And that Lawler rogue connection has been very complicated this whole game. Definitely seems to be a chemistry thing problem here and seems like they should definitely focus their passing plays on Hunter Sands, who's been great so far. Third and seven now for Wilmington. Roke with the snap, gonna hand it off. And so is gonna be stopped very short there. Nathan Delgado with the tackle. Kelly McCary, Delgado the stop and back to the ball, no game. That'll bring up fourth down. Seven. Wilmington electing to punt here. Woish back for the return. And Wilmington electing to punt here definitely seems to be like they have tapped out, maybe even thrown in the towel. Definitely realizing that a comeback here is impossible. Yeah, definitely a disappointing season for the Wildcats. Expectations weren't overtly high, but not winning a game in the regular season is certainly a disappointment, as we see Woish taking a fair catch here. Wilson Delgado in the backfield. Christian Delgado in motion. Nathan Delgado gets a handoff. Delgado to carry. Stop by number 52. Wilmington defensive line maintaining its excellence throughout the night. Really been a standout piece on this drudgingly bad Wilmington team. And the Wildcat seems to have turned into a house cat tonight. 
not been able to make much of anything and rather than getting loose and going wild it seems to just seems like both the offense and defense have just decided to stay home for the night as we see Bobby DeFeo taking the handoff there Going to pick up about four. It's third and five here for Wakefield. On the edge of Wilmington territory. Willis looking to throw. Finds Christian Delgado easily over the middle, picking up the first down. Great catch there by Christian. Really able to keep it moving, keep the offense awake. New set of downs here for Wakefield as we reach the final minute of the third quarter. We got Christian Delgado in motion. It's gonna be a handoff to Nathan. And Nathan, gonna find a decent amount of breathing room to pick up a few yards. Looks like it's gonna be a five yard gain there for Nathan. Yeah, Wakefield definitely going to be looking to just drain out the clock here. 32 nothing. no reason to rush their way through this offense. Absolutely, and definitely wants to maintain a shutout here, giving Wilmington no chances. It's going to be another handoff to Nathan. He's going to charge forward a little bit. Seems like he will pick up the first down. And that will be the end of the third quarter. Wakefield driving deep into Wilmington territory. Starting off this fourth quarter, Willis is going to find Christian Delgado to the outside. Delgado's got room, making a move. Getting all the way down to the 10-yard line. Great job there. Great play there by Christian Delgado. Really able to move down the field. That time showing the finesse. Cutting the ball back and forth upfield. And with the ball on the 10, this will be first and goal for Wakefield. Trying to put some more points on the board, given their biggest win of the season. It's going to be a handoff to Nathan, and Nathan's going to get some breathing room, not in for the touchdown, but a decent game. 
Yeah, down inside the five now, Wakefield. No excuse not to punch Nathan it in here. And someone we haven't seen yet this game, but certainly I'd like to see is Brian Fabry. Definitely would like to see him get out on the field, maybe pick up a touchdown. Yeah, Fabry touchdown would bring some life into Landrigan Field right now. As this crowd has been a bit bored to death with how well Wakefield's been playing. Timeout, Wilmington. It's going to be a timeout here by Wilmington. It seems like even the scorekeeper may be bored to death as we still see that clock is moving even on the timeout. Really trying to get out here early, maybe watch the game one of the World Series, hashtag Phillies in six. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Looks like to be a handoff to Nathan Delgado and he's not gonna be able to get into the end zone. And this will bring up third down, and there's only one man you got to give the ball to on this play, and that's Brian Fabry. Brian Fabry can definitely get into the end zone on this play, and I'd love to see him out here, but I don't think Wakefield's going to go that route. Absolutely. Fabry, a strong runner with connections to Alabama for next year. As we see Nathan Delgado punching in the touchdown here. This will bring Wakefield to their biggest total of the year. Most points scored in their final home game. Great sight to see for these fans. with the kick, it's good. Looks like I got a word from the Secret Service right now. Looks like we're gonna have an, ina an inaugural address from the president of the class of 2023. Really wants to make a statement here for the seniors on senior night. And just about halfway through, 
this fourth quarter already. This clock is not stopping for anyone. No timeouts, no nothing. Wifio swarming. Wilmington now not getting much of anywhere. As you see a mass exodus here in the stands at Wangerkin Field. Wakefield fans knowing that this game is over by far. And Moses seems to have done his job. He, part the, he parted the Red Sea and now is getting the Red Sea to the promised land and getting him out of the stadium at this point. Wilmington set up deep within their own territory. It's going to be a handoff to Sella. Not much happening there for Wilmington. And we are now joined by Harry Hodzik, senior class president. And Harry, on senior night, we'd like to hear some words from our cl fearless class president on how this game is going and how this overall season has been going for Wakefield. What are your thoughts? Honestly, I'm at a loss for words. It's hard to put towards how proud I am of this team and how we're able, just look at the scoreboard right now, 39 to zero. And this isn't something that like is out of the ordinary. This is like the average thing. Every game we've been to hasn't even been close. Like I want it to be close. I want to have like the, I believe that we will win chance, but it's just so hard for teams to actually be able to keep up with us. And it's just so great to see that our team's able to do this good consistently and that we're like, we're definitely a threat in the playoffs right now. And I'm very excited to just see what we're able to do, how much damage we can do. I think we can get the title. I really hope so. But it's great to be in the student section cheering on our team. But student section has been lacking a bit, but the football team can make up for everything we're missing. And any words for, as we see, a fumble recovery there. Great play by Amione. Absolutely amazing. Oh my god. It's, just, like, it's not even out of the ordinary now. This is casual behavior for us. Now 48 or 45 0, going up to 46. With yeah, Amione taking that one in for a touchdown. Impressive play there. And Harry, as we close out our interview here, any words for the future and our viewers at home? Guys, keep on, keep it on. Make sure you show your love and support to Wakefield. We have this all. Just let's go, Warriors. And thank you, Harry. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Sorry for that break in the game here, but I thought we would provide some interesting content I was, as it is now 45-0 to zero here as a blocked kick there from Moish. And Moish limping off the field. Definitely not what you want to see from Moish, who's been great all season. Nevertheless, that unfortunate result there from the point after attempt. What a play by Wakefield. And as you can see, this clock will not stop continuing to roll even after a block point after attempt. Before the game, I was talking to Max Cusack and I asked him his confidence level of getting the win tonight. And he told me he was confident, but to never be overconfident, and I'd say they could have been overconfident. A 45 to nothing win is nothing to be humble about. The one thing I will say, don't count yourself short yet, Wakefield. Still a minute left. Definitely potential to put some more points on the board, get into the 50 area.
And that clock still ticking down, stopping for no one. As a kick from Moish as we enter the final 30 seconds of this game. So we're returning this one. Gonna be and tackled like there. And it looks like that will do it. Yeah, Zach Satori with the tackle there. Unfortunate we didn't get to see more action from the Alabama commit. But obviously, great game played by Wakefield. Absolute dominance in their final home game. Huge win on senior night. Couldn't ask for a better game. And that's going to be in the game. Your Wakefield Warriors, 45-0 against the White, the Wilmington Wildcats, or the House Cats as we call them tonight. I'm Drew Scrimmerhorn along with Timothy Brown signing off tonight. We'll see you hopefully next week in for the, the playoffs. First, in the playoffs, first playoff game for Wakefield.